Well, today's video is about armchair engineers. Now, this is a word that's been thrown around between Hambini and Peak Talk and myself. Are we armchairs engineers? Is Wayno an armchair engineer? Well, we're going to roll that intro and we're going to find out if I really am an armchair engineer. Well, I'm down here in Albany, West Australia, which is, if you look at West Australia and Perth, if you're from overseas, well, Albany's right down the bottom of West Australia. And what's really famous about Albany is that it was where the, the whaling used to be done before it was banned, and it was a really big whaling centre. But that was banned many, many years ago, so that doesn't happen anymore. And also, in 1914, this is where all of the Australian diggers left Australia on the ships to go and fight in World War One. So it was a very, very significant point in our, our military history. So, and Albany has a similar weather to Melbourne. And uh, I'm down here with my mum because we've got a family wedding to go to, so that's really nice. And, and it looks like there's not gonna be any, any rain, but it's a little bit cloudy at the moment. So hopefully that'll change and we'll get a bit more sunshine. So it'll be a beautiful day for the young couple. We also went up to Mount Clarence, which is a lookout point here, which they have a statue there of a horse and a soldier to indicate this is where the Australian diggers left. And there is a tree planted on that hill for all of the diggers that died. So that was a great place to go last night and we saw a magnificent sunset. Well, as we're aware, Pete Talk and Habini have been called armchair engineers. And the question is, is Wayno an armchair engineer? Now, to be quite honest, I'm not an engineer, I'm a technician. And my background is that I worked in testing for about 25 years. So I've written thousands of reports, I've done thousands of tests, I've read hundreds of standards. So that's where my background is. And that's why when you look at things like manufacturing and all that sort of thing, I've been able to look at that stuff and say, hey, you know, this just doesn't seem to add up. And as a tester, you have to be able to have a sixth sense for, is this information I'm getting out of my test unit really accurate? Because a lot of things can affect results when you're testing. And whenever you actually get something that looks a bit funny, you always question yourself, well, am I doing everything wrong? You go through, you double check everything, you change the wires, you change the setup, you may actually change things to actually then prove that you're getting right. Like you may compare, instead of a standard to your test object, you may, you may test a standard to a standard to make sure that the errors relate back to your calibration certificate. So that's my background, and that's why I actually used to have NATA signatory. So I think it really comes down to the fact that I'm probably not an armchair engineer. I'm probably a armchair technician maybe, or an armchair tester. And maybe you guys are actually armchair commentators or commenters down the bottom there. So we can all put armchair in front of any word, but the reality is, and this is the, the bottom line, if you're claiming something, right, and I'm not saying guys like Hambini and Pete talking us, because what we're doing is, is we're going, hang on a sec, this just doesn't sound quite right. But if you're a manufacturer and you've done research, you've designed the product, you've made a product a certain way for a certain reason, then I do believe that you should be able to stand by your product. And I don't think that's too much to ask. And I'd like you guys to leave your comments down below. What do you think? Because it's, um, 
a lot of people like to put the emphasis on the knockers. So to me, that that's a little bit of a false analogy because what we're saying is we're saying just because someone's invested some money and they've manufactured a product and they put that product to the market, that we assume that they know what they're doing and that that product works as advertised. But that's not always the case. And I think people should call out these companies. And, you know, okay, I haven't got the same setup that manufacturers have got because obviously they've got those setups because they're developing a product. But if something doesn't quite look right, we should be able to ask manufacturers and say, hang on a sec, this here doesn't look right. Can you substantiate what you're saying here? Can you show us how you, why you designed it like this or why it works like this? And I think that that's reasonable. I think you need to have debates about these things. And, and I, do, I do think that people like Pete Talk and Hambini and myself, and even Les Year Technique from Rail, we're not, we're not really trying to knock products. What we're trying to do is just keep them honest. If that, if that makes sense, guys. I hope it does. Anyway, so it might seem like, you know, we're being a little bit negative Nancy sometimes, but I think what, what it is we're doing is we're keeping the industry honest because with these people that are calling them out, then they have to say, oh, no, that's not true. Or, you know, we're going to fix this because there's been a number of problems. And I do believe that some things have been changed in the cycling industry because people have called it out and it's got some traction. Well, anyway, guys, that's where I'm going to leave the video for today. I'm going to enjoy Albany down here. It's, it's quite mild today, a little bit cooler than it was yesterday, but uh, I'm going to put some nice clothes on and go to a wedding and have a good feed. So I'll see you a bit later on. Cheers.